Hello, and welcome to the Casino Tears podcast. I'm one of your hosts, 10 Ton is number one, and joining me as my co-host is the one and only Ed Robinson from Roll to Win Craps. If you want more info on our show, please visit our page at casinotears.com. On this week's show, we discuss The Vent Line, Pretty Boy from East Tennessee, Harris Cherokee, Sawdust Joints, The Blue Collar Game. We also touch on Etouffee, Rug Joints, Sunset on the Strip, Meister Brow Secret, and What Not to Ask a 92-Year-Old Southern Grandma. What is that in a yellow candy? It's a lemon lime. Lemon lime what? It's called pop soda. Culture pop. I didn't think you drank soda. Well, it's it's like a probiotic soda. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Is it carbonated? Fizzy, tangy, zesty, lively, gutsy. It's supposed to be good for you, I guess. You guess? Yeah, I mean. You're always ragging on people drinking soda. Well, I started drinking this. It's like, it's basically like carbonated water. And it's supposed to be good for you. It's plant-based and vegan. Plant-based what? Plant-based and vegan. It's supposed to be good for you, like a probiotic. I would never, I would never even pop the top of that, let alone let I my would. lips touch the top. I, of I bought this because I like the packaging, dude. And they have some flavors. They added strawberry rhubarb. When you said vegan, I'm done. Mm. So, Ed, let's talk about this voicemail. Hell yeah. On our uh, Casino Tears No 7. 229 No 7 vent line. Yeah, Ed, I know you love that. I do. If you dial it, folks, you get to hear me. So, pretty boy from East Tennessee left us a message, a great, great voicemail that I sent over to you, and it was uh, inspiring, and I wanted to talk about it. Are you going to actually play that? You know what? I can play it. So, if we listen to let's let's play it, and then let's respond. Okay. Now, I just want to tell you, I've been listening to every episode so far, super podcast. Real gamblers talking about stuff people really want to know about. We don't care about the restaurants. We don't care about the shows. We want to hear about craps, crap stories, and the money that you put down on the line. This is Pretty Boy from East Tennessee. I mainly play at Harris Cherokee, but uh, there have been a hard rock that's opened up in Bristol, Tennessee, Bristol, Virginia. Uh, kind of a sawdust joint right now, but they are building a tower, and going to expand it maybe my new home casino just kind of burned out on the cherokee vibe over there got pretty rough at times uh dealers are just not friendly uh it's not a good game but the great game ain't that great in uh virginia either so uh once you get used to mississippi craps uh it's hard to get used to anything the vig on the five and nine uh not having the uh, when you buy the five and nine no vig at a uh, tunica and Bluxy is hard to beat. If you guys could talk about that, the advantages of dice in Mississippi. I go to Bluxy about two times a year. Uh, we we'll love to meet up with Ed sometime. Uh, you know, no pressure. If we just happen to run across, that's fine. But just wonder if you ever get to Cherokee or Virginia, Ed. And ton, uh, I come to Vegas about twice a year. Also, uh, might run into you one day too. But guys, thank you so much for your podcast. Uh, brush of fresh air for people who like to row. Thank you. Listen, man, that message from Pretty Boy from East Tennessee. It was excellent. That that really made my like week just hearing that. Yeah. So let me just say first, Pretty Boy, thank you. I like your handle. And that's that's a gutsy handle from somebody that lives in the mountains of East Tennessee. I appreciate you doing that. And so let me first say this. I have never played craps at the Harris in Cherokee because the last time I went into that casino, they didn't even have table games. And that was probably 25 years ago. So I don't go there. Um, it's too far a drive for me. The only way I can get there from here is either I've got to go up through West Georgia and cut up, or I've got to go straight through Chattanooga and on in through Pigeon Forge into Gatlinburg and over the mountains of the Smoky Mountains to get there. And it's just, it's just too far. And I don't, 
you know, I don't have any comps with the uh, Cherokees there, even though I know it is a Caesar's property, but no reason for me to go there unless, you know, I'm just on vacation and I almost never vacation in Gatlinburg. Been a minute since you've been to Cherokee, huh? Well, actually, it's been a long time since I've been to Cherokee. I was in Gatlinburg about five years ago, and I had, had planned on sneaking over to Cherokee, but it snowed. And when it snowed, they closed all the roads going over the mountain, and I couldn't even get out of Gatlinburg. Yeah, so, what mountain is that? Uh, it's, it's it's the Smoky Mountain oh, National yeah. Park. Smoky Mountains, dude. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, all that area right there, believe it or not, that is the second most visited tourist area in the United States. Okay, that I did not know and would not have believed you if you had said that. The only one that's higher is uh, what, the Grand Canyon? down in Florida. Huh? Grand Canyon? No. The only one that's higher is uh, Disney World down in Orlando. Wow, didn't know that, man. Yeah, first of all, Pretty Boy. Man, that's a that is a gutsy name, dude. It is. I wonder how he got that handle. Pretty boy, you get a you you automatically get a license. He does. He gets a license. Send your address in and we'll give you one of the first crafts license out there. Ed, they're gonna be ready in about less than two weeks. Good. Order went in today. I, and I love all of the uh, all of the stuff I've seen on it. I mean, they're 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 hilarious and 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 fun. Oh man, they're gonna be cool. I can't wait to. Yeah, pretty boy is gonna be issued a crafts license for twenty twenty four. Yeah, and Ed, that's only valid until is it December? Does it end January like thirty first? Look, crap season officially ends right after Turkey Day. Okay, that's when crap season officially ends. If you've got a craps license mm -hmm. that includes the extra bounty, yeah, then you can extend it to December 31st. Okay. All right, that's fair enough. Come January 2nd, my mom's birthday, you got to have a new license. Well, yeah, because crap season starts February 1st. February 1st. Which happens to be my dad's birthday. But if you've got an extended license, you know, if you've got the license, you can extend it from January through December, but you got to have a license. So yeah, you can just uh, extend that for those two months. Yeah, you get to hunt in two. You get you get to hunt for craps in, in two months of off season. Yeah, like like ice fishing while they're mating. You can yeah. still hunt. <laughs> okay, so that message. Listen, he used a term that I had to look up, Ed, because I had never heard it. Oh, like he he, and it was awesome. He says, kind of a sawdust joint. Sawdust joint, dude. Dude, I've never heard that term. That's country. That's Southern country right there, buddy. That's my brother. I had to look it up. Do you know what that is? Because I was. Sure, don't you? You didn't know? I didn't know. So that's like the old places, old gambling places. They put sawdust on the floor. Yeah. To soak up the drinks. Yeah. They said the, the nicer places were called like carpet joints or something because they had rugs. They had carpet instead of sawdust. Dude, Ed, it was called a rug joint. That's what they the called joint. the nicer ones. So it was yeah, sawdust joints and rug joints. Dude, I've never heard of that, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> Such an educational podcast we have. <laughs> yeah, it's shit like this, which I love. We're learning all kind of stuff. Over here, there's a lot of rug joints, dude. There's a lot of rug joints where you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Those are carpet joints. Yeah. So <laughs> those are really nice. Those rug joints. That's what I'm going to start calling them. Call them the rug when joint. rug joint. Okay. <laughs> so he said that he loved Mississippi crap. So yes, I saw. Yeah, I appreciate that. And so I'd love to, you know, if he ever runs into me, be sure and speak up, you know, because I'm there more than I should be probably, but I'm there a lot. We should talk about that again, though. So especially on the five and nine. Yeah. He said there's no VIG at Tunica. There's no VIG. It's a gaming commission rule that they've got to do something that give the players a little bit of a, a little bit of more advantage than the house edge normally would require so most of the corporate casinos will give you no vig because of the gaming commission rules on the four five nine and ten 
only on the win. Right. Love that. Right. So uh, I know of one casino and that's not an Indian casino that doesn't give you the four, the five and nine for free, but they give you the four and 10 totally free. Never a big on the four and 10. So is he saying that at his sawdust joint in Cherokee? Is that? That was in Virginia. The sawdust joint is in Virginia. All of the other casinos outside of Mississippi, mm -hmm. they're going to charge you the VIG up front. I mean, why buy the five? You don't buy the five and nine unless you're it's free anyway, right? So, yeah. Um, as I understand it, they're all going to just be like you would in Vegas or in Atlantic City or any of the other casinos. There's a couple of Indian casinos, Choctaw Nation casinos yeah. in Mississippi. They have their own gaming rules, their own gaming commission. They charge the VIG up front on the four and 10. There's no automatic buys on the five and nine. So why go there? Man, Ed, I hate paying VIGs up front. I just hate it. Gets me mad. Because they never give them back. They never give them back. You would think that, okay, when the seven hits and you didn't win anything on that four or 10, they should give you your two bucks back. They don't. Yeah, to be nice. Those are the things that irk me. Exactly. They're greedy. And it's like, that's just another little, it's like, just, oh, let's just keep this couple bucks. Let's just keep yeah. this dollar. At least they're not, at least they're not charging you like in Oklahoma, a dollar just to play every shooter. No way, dude. Pay to play. <laughs> that's like playing yeah. in a band in LA. They charge you a dollar. I, I know for the shooter, they at least charge the shooter a dollar every hand. What? That is just fundamentally wrong. It's like you have to pay to play. Yeah. There's a vig just to play. You will not, you will not see me playing at those places. That's no way is this, this casino tier is ever set in foot in those places. Never. No way. I can't believe no. that. Why did that? And that is like, that's extortion. Dude, they already are. Ext They've already got the house edge. I know. And they're just like pressing their foot down on our throats, dude. Yeah. I mean, I think some of them have kind of started wavering on that, but that used to be absolute everywhere. Like all the Choctaw or Cherokees that are owned in Oklahoma, you had to pay a VIG just to shoot. That's wrong. That's or a wrong. Or just to play. Something like that. I don't know. It's so it's so stupid. I don't even remember the rules. So pretty boy, he knows. Yeah. You got to go to Mississippi. Yeah. You got to go to Mississippi. That's the place. Biloxi and Tunica, Vicksburg. It's only three places I've ever been. It's been forever since I've been to Vicksburg. <clears throat> and a lot of the places in Mississippi have quit charging the VIG on the extremes on Craftless now. There you go, Mississippi. That's what I'm talking about. You know, they, they char you, play, you pay it on the win instead of up front and that's fine and that's fair and that's how it should be hard rock still pays i don't think the bow revage i think they've changed i can't remember now i don't play there enough up in tunica i think you pay on the win i feel like that's like the friendly thing to do it's like hey we're here we've got the edge you're already betting on some of the hardest numbers to hit yeah but you know back to back to pretty boy from tennessee i appreciate you calling in yeah and you know, if you ever you ever see me, please introduce yourself. I'm not hard to recognize. I've always got a hat on. It's usually a black Stetson. Or it'll say Casino Tears Cap, one of the two. Yeah, nice Ed. Expanding your wardrobe. I am expanding my wardrobe just a little bit. The so, headgear is expanding. Yeah, but listen, man, pretty boy. But that is exactly what the no seven that line was for the call-in line was for that is exactly what it's for and he doesn't like playing in cherokee because he says he's gotten some heat or the dealers are just kind of there earning a paycheck or whatever but that's got to suck ed when you don't have a lot of options that's why i can be how i am with this kind of attitude in vegas right Horseshoe, cool. Yeah. You're going to charge the VIG. Guess what? You don't get my business. Silverton, you're going to charge the VIG up front. Guess what? You don't get my business, even though I kind of like that you have two crap stables. 
you know? And a manta ray. Yeah, and the manta ray, dude. Wait till you see that picture, Ed. That picture is, I got a fantastic picture. That manta I've ray, I've probably dude. seen the same manta ray 15 years ago. I don't know how long the lifespan of a manta ray is. Did you hear about, there's a manta ray somewhere I saw on the news that is in a tank with like a shark and yeah. it's pregnant. There's no other manta rays in there. So there are people saying that like the shark got the manta ray pregnant. It's a, it's out there right now. It's like newsworthy. That's not newsworthy. Yeah. But what happens dude is that a manta ray and, I, it's just, and listen, educational dude, the manta ray, if it's on its own for that long by itself, it will end up having its own babies. It's kind of fascinating, isn't it? People think the shark did it, uh, like, and they're going to have shark babies, but it's not. The shark didn't do it. It's not possible. Kind of like a worm. A worm can have its own children, too. Yeah, they're like, uh, yeah, worms can do that. Well, whatever they call it. I don't even know what. I, I'm afraid to even come out with a term for it now because it's probably not. <laughs> yeah, you probably, like, get canceled. Yeah. All right? I think they're, like, asexual or something like that. They're. There's something. Uh, There's a term. Yeah, it's, it's 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 a weird term. Yeah, but this I like sawdust joint though. That's the term. I was in a sawdust joint, but it didn't have a craps table up in Tennessee. But it was a bar, and all the sawdust was on the floor. It was all. It was almost an outdoor bar. Yeah. Was there gambling going on in it? No, there wasn't any gambling. There was a lot of drinking and singing going on. Yeah, that sounds like a. That sounds like you're. Yeah, normal sawdust joint. But you seems like you should be in a sawdust joint. Ed. I need to I need to find a sawdust joint. Yeah. Dude, over here there's a lot of rug joints, dude, that I'm going to. I might go to one you. tonight, man. I was thinking about walking over to Paris tonight. We got to get something on Patreon if you want people to to spend money to support Whatever the fuck it is we're doing. Hell yeah, dude. You are then they gotta have a reason. You are absolutely they've gotta right. Have, they've gotta have a reason to spend eleven or twenty-two dollars. Hell yeah. Dude, you're absolutely right. Let me remind all of our listeners there is a Patreon channel. If you like what we're doing, we're trying to get you some material out there. We have two levels. One is eleven dollars. That's the Yo Adrian level. But if you really want to be cool, you can do the $22 one. And that is the hard forever level. Yeah. I mean, how can you beat that? That's better <laughs> than Viagra. You can't. You can't. But right now, we're going to make these unbeatable. And the Casino Tears Venom. 29 no 7. 229 no 7. Pretty Boy has like the first Hall of Fame message. He gets the first Hall of Fame fishing license we might have to issue him a lifetime license ed it was that easy someone just had to call the vent line and they get a craps light and then all of a sudden they get this this craps license which i don't think people are, even understand how cool this is they haven't seen the, the nobody knows what we've got on this. i know I mean, nobody knows i can't wait till we see that in the store that's going to be sweet oh dude something else that pretty boy said which i actually loved and i got to tell you man it's hearing that feedback was genuinely inspiring to me. It was because he wanted to know what we do. You know, yeah, we're going to talk about our hotels and we're going to talk about, I mean, we've had some episodes where we talked about Westgate's restaurants and all that kind of stuff, but nobody knows about the Westgate really that I know. I mean, I don't know anything about the Westgate until you started going there. So I think we're going to cover a lot of ground, dude. We're going to cover a little bit of everything, and we're going to throw in what we think is important about the trip, even if it is a great meal or a, you know, a fun show, maybe. But we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. We're just going to say, yeah, we liked it. Again, there's not a lot of podcasts that, about crabs, and a, a lot of them, I think, veer on, and they're fantastic and great in what they do, but they... No, they're not. We have... We have set up. We are taking over. We have set up, you know, our. We are taking over. <laughs> we are taking over. No, but. You Ed, can put that. You can listen, put this live. It says yeah. we are taking your ass 
down. Listen, what I liked is that he, what he said is that he we're actually talking about like the real craps games and it's and it's a variety of craps games and it's a, I like that his line and the money that you put down on the line. Yeah, cuz I play cheap. Yeah, but that's great. I play cheap. I play I play the blue collar game. You play you play the white collar game. Hey, listen. Ed, I do not listen. I was as blue collar. But you're learning. You're learning, and you will be surprised if you will take the same discipline that you have learning with that 620, if you'll take that with your normal buy-in, your normal play, but the same discipline, you will be amazed at what your game will do. Ed, I am working on something because of this. And by the way, I was brought up, okay, blue collar. My drinks are blue collar. You can't get any more blue collar than a Miller High Life as having my like flagship drink. There ain't no way you get more blue collar than Miller High Life unless it's old Milwaukee. And you know, yeah, you're Schlitz. right. Yeah. Or Schlitz. Something like that. Do they even make that stuff anymore? No, I don't know. Or Meister Brow, dude. Did we ever talk about Meister Brow? You remember, do you remember Hams? What the hell is that? H A M. Ham's beer. It was either one M or two M. <laughs> that doesn't sound like it would taste good, man. No, nah, the the beer can was like a small keg. Oh, really? That's like cool. A small keg, yeah. And it had some kind of mountain theme. It was. Do you remember Grolsch? Do you remember that beer? Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. They used to have the porcelain top that on a wire. And what people did when we were in like high school is that you used to take the port the the porcelain like little stopper top from a Grolsch beer because you'd clip it open. They used to cut that wire out and they used to use that to hold joints so that you wouldn't like burn your lips. And they used to put that. That's what they used the Grolsch tops. It smoked that roach all the way to nothing. Yeah, that's what it is. A roach clip, basically. See? That How would I know? <laughs> yeah, I think you, that's what you did. How would I that's know? That's what you did it in the in the truck back there with the shotguns. Yeah. 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 So Meisterbrow, dude, Meisterbrow was like a beer that was mostly, I think, in that like New Jersey, Pennsylvania region. Guess what beer turned into Meisterbrow, dude? Right. This is a fantastic trivia question. There's a beer that you will never guess. So Meisterbrow turned into Miller Lite. Seriously? I'm serious. I'm not kidding. Miller bought the rights or whatever to Meisterbrow. And they rebranded it for and marketed it for females as tastes great, less filling. Miller Lite is Meisterbrow, just repackaged. I had a Miller Lite last weekend. Yeah, well, you were drinking a Meisterbrow, and that's a great name for a beer, isn't it, dude? And I had a Michelob Ultra Lite. Ah, Michelob, yeah. So yeah. Michelob's, dude, I used to drink Michelob's. My dad used to let me have a beer when I finished cutting the grass, and it would always be a Michelob. No, uh, you, you want to hear a, you want to hear a Miller Pony story, dude? I'd love to hear a Miller Pony story. I love beer stories, man. Okay, you never. I, I, this was way long ago in a galaxy far, far away. It was Dark Vader in, in a universe that has yet to be discovered? Okay. When when Ed was in his early twenties, mm -hmm. I had a neighbor next door to me. It was actually my wife's grandmother. My yeah. wife passed away, but it was her grandmother. And I would go cut her grass. And she was 90 plus years old, 93, 94 years old. So I'd go cut her grass when I cut mine. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I cut the mower off, here she would come out to the front porch and she'd, she'd pat, on, pat on top of the railing, which was all, it was like an old, old yeah. brick front porch and she would she would pat on the railing and say come on and she'd set a miller pony up on the rail for me to have nice. as my payment and my refreshment for mowing her grass is that just that was the payment Nothing that was like... it yeah i mean i wasn't i wasn't charging her anyway yeah i was just cutting her grass because she was right next door i'd cut mine cut hers but you never ask a 90 year old plus lady, a question that you don't, that you're not prepared for the answer for. Oh, how come? 
because I'm sitting there. She's drinking a Miller Pony. I'm drinking a Miller Pony. We're sitting on the front porch. I'm in the I'm in the porch swing. Mm -hmm. Typical Southern. Yeah, sounds porch. Southern, dude. Oh yeah. And so I go, what do you I asked her a question? I said, what do you think mm -hmm. is the secret to your living the long life that you have? Oh, I like that question. Because I considered her an elderly person. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, like 22. She's like 92. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me and she said, well, I'll tell you, there's two things that contribute to my living a long life. I drink one of these a day and she held up the Miller Pony. Nice. Like, yeah. And then she said, and then she said, and I do every day. Oh man, man, oh man. I don't know if that's what you want to hear. That is not I didn't want to hear that. No, I didn't want to hear that again. I don't I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that kind of one. No, man, that is not something that traumatized me probably if I was young. I can't I have a problem with Miller ponies ever since. Oh man, now yeah, that association. Mm -mm. But grandma, no way, dude. Hell, hell, uh, uh, -uh. no, dude. <laughs> Did you, I would not be going back cutting her grass. A Miller pony, hell, a douche no, guy. dude, no, uh, uh. She would make these. Oh my uh, god. <laughs> hey, th hey cooking. thanks for that words to live by, right? That word to live. <laughs> her grandma, thanks. <laughs> That's a true That's story. That's a secret. <laughs> Yeah, I've never, believe me, I've never forgotten her. So. Yeah, I would not. Now I'm, thank you, because now I'm going to like remember that. I don't want to remember that. I do not want to remember that at all. No, but dude, the so Meister Brow, though, the cans were awesome. My friend's dad used to always drink those things. And did they have like, a bottle top? Did they have a bottled one where you had the wire top? No, that was Grolsch. That was the girls was the only ones that I know that had the wire top with the, that you'd pop it open and then you'd you'd take that out. Yep. That was Meister Brow. So it's Miller Light. I had no idea. I just thought it was watered down Miller. Nope. I don't I, do they make ponies anymore? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. So half our half our listening audience doesn't know what a Miller pony is. How many ounces is that? It was a little bitty little they came in an eight pack instead of a six pack. Oh, dude. They were always in a glass. They weren't in cans. It was a glass bottle, but it was like six ounces instead of eight ounce, or 12 ounces. It was like a half a beer. Dude, there was a beer called Mickey's, and they used to have those. Those are so cool, those small glass beers. By the way, the coolest thing about Michigan, when I was living in Ann Arbor, they had a beer drive through a beer drive through drive through beer station yeah you drive through and you get beer that's pretty sweet it's called the beer depot that wouldn't fly down here no no not in the bible belt oh yeah but i feel like you guys drink a lot in the bible belt we do but we do it sitting on the front porch sitting the in the yeah sitting in the sawdust joints sitting in the sawdust joints or the front porch but yeah man the vent line that's where it's all about that was inspiring I was really, really pleased that we had Pretty Boy call us on 22907 and tell us his story, tell us what he liked about what we did, and tell us a little bit about what he didn't like where he plays. I can't wait for more people to start calling because it's good to hear feedback of what people want to listen to, too. Like someone that commented, he's like, what I like about the podcast is like real men talking about real craps. I yeah. fucking love that. I mean, it's not, it's not fake stuff. I mean, it's just what we do. Listen, Ed, we should have people call that 22907 and tell us some rug joint stories. Rug joint. Oh, and some sawdust joint stories. Sawdust joint, man. Sawdust joint. I guess I'm going to tell you more rug, rug joint stories over here. They got any new rugs in uh, Vegas? <laughs> oh, my God, dude. They do have a new rug. If there's a new rug. And I can't believe you, you asked me that. This is like, so we don't script any of this stuff. Okay. No. We don't. Okay. No. Ed, 
I never would have brought this up, but there is a new rug in Planet Hollywood. In Planet Hollywood. Yeah. Dude, that's so funny that you even said that. I stayed at Planet Hollywood once. I enjoyed it. I was in the Bruce Willis room. Oh, really? Yeah. What makes it the Bruce Willis room? It had some of his memorabilia from movies hanging up in there. Uh, my favorite Bruce Willis movie is Die Hard. Oh, from a movie standpoint, of course. Yeah, it's the best one. Speaking of a new rug in a rug joint, I met the director of casino operations last night. At one of the corporate casinos. Yeah, well. We don't say which one. Yeah, it's at the at the new rug joint, all right? At the new rug joint. And he was so nice, man. This guy's from Louisiana. Of course he's nice. He's a Southern guy. He's a director of casino operations over at Paris, Planet Hollywood, and Horseshoe. I was able to walk the floor with him. He is a avid, avid craps enthusiast. And he's the guy, Ed, he's the guy that brought crapless to Vegas. You know why? You know why he did that? I'm just guessing, but I can tell you why. It's so popular down more, there. It's yeah. so popular in the South, man. I keep telling everybody, crapless is so popular in the South. Whether he was from Mississippi or Louisiana or down in New Orleans, it doesn't matter. All of the casinos have probably 50% of their tables are crapless. Well, I don't like the electronic stuff, but I do... I have an interest in the stadium craps piece. I don't like the one that's named after me, Roll to Win. Oh yeah, that that and that's not a fill. You don't. I you should be getting residuals for that. I should, I should, I should, I should. But I'm not a fan of those those electronic tables. But and I'll be honest, I've not played the uh, stadium craps. I saw it in, at the Tropicana in Atlantic City, but it was always packed, and so I didn't ever play it. He suggested I give it a try, and I was like, man, I don't know what that'll do for my rep. You and I will go give it a play. If someone sees Early us playing, playing stadium craps, man, but you know what? Maybe it's worth a it's worth a shot. See how, you, how we can do with uh, electronic betting and all that. I don't mind the electronic betting. I just don't mind. I don't. I don't like those acrylic surfaces on those other tapes. That's just my opinion. And 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 also, look, the the camaraderie and the yeah, the table spirit is not there because everybody's sitting at a different station that's betting. I, that, yeah, that that's a detractor for me. Ed, you know what? Why don't you talk about what we just finished recording the other night? I'll be happy to. We just finished having our first guest interview with one of my favorite people. That would be Bo Parker, the dice coach. He lives in Las Vegas. And he and I have never played together, but he and I have crossed paths many times. We've talked on the phone a lot. And many, many, many of my friends started their career in craps as his as a student of his and you know bo has bo bo has such a long lasting reputation in the in the craps community that it was an honor just to get him up here and then to put him on the sunset series there the sunset strip series yeah so ed we're gonna call what did we decide to call it so this was our first live recorded interview and we had kind of planned this out for a while that Bo was going to be the first first person we interview for this yep it was definitely unscripted and very two and a half hours of conversation is what it was we're taking advantage of this view here so yeah when 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 we bring people in to your place to do this sunset on the strip series i like that name dude sunset on the strip the Vegas yep. Strip series. Yep. Sunset on the Strip. Sunset on the Strip series. We're going to do it with the Las Vegas Strip behind them. And the neat thing about the timing of this, we started in daylight and we ended at dusk. And so you had the full sunset experience 
of Las Vegas from your your apartment there, high atop the strip. And it is cool. And it's very fitting, by the way, for these fucking legends to be sitting in front of this, uh, you know, we're having that backdrop of all the major casinos on this side of the strip. Cosmo, Bellagio, Caesars, Paris. It's like, it's right there. That's what we discovered, actually. I think we got the name because we started right around that time, like 530 Pacific time. When we ended, it was like close to eight. What was really cool is that when we fast forwarded the video is like watching a time lapse of the sun go down and it looked great. That's the whole vibe of this. We'll have guests come in right around that time and then we'll just keep talking. And I guarantee you the guests that we bring in are not going to be at a loss for words. I mean, we could have interviewed Bo. We could have talked to this guy forever. We didn't even ask him about handles, dude. Yeah, we're going to talk forever. So we'll bring him back. Let's bring him back once a quarter or something, just to give us an update on what he's doing in Vegas. We're trying to line it up. We've got Heavy coming into town. He's doing his class there. We'd love to have Heavy, which is a, Heavy and I are long, long time friends. You've never met him, but you're going to take the class. Oh, I got to give Heavy credit for this. He described our podcast as he used the phrase, that's some back porch talking, which yeah, that's I... It fucking love that he described it like that and i told him i'd give him credit because i'm gonna use it heavy loves to sit on the porch probably enjoy a good glass of bourbon and a big fine cigar look dude we got heavy we've got hosts we've got floor people we've got box people all wanting to come and 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 do the sunset on the strip series what's nice is that the studio environment i think is going to match like their reputations and it's going to really like do them justice in my mind because these people all deserve a lot of respect i mean i respect oh, yeah. them it's really an honor to get these guys in here because of how long they've been playing and the knowledge that they have and the knowledge that they're willing to share with the just the general that's what cuts us a different tell me from all the yeah. other podcasts we bring real people in, talk about real shit yep, and about like real that. craps yep. and not some fluffy stuff about some etouffee <laughs> that they ate at a god dang restaurant. Oh, what the hell? Yeah. I like that, Ed. That's a good, what? that's, that's a good way to sum it up. What did you say? Etouffee? Etouffee. I, I don't even know what the hell, what is that? Dude, there's, I don't know. Uh, I like <laughs> it. I like it. You get that at a rug joint, whatever that is. You definitely get that out no. of rug joint. Give me greasy burgers, French fries, and a good cold beer, and I'm good to go. Yeah. Even and then I can't eat those things. Some other people could have the foie gras and the etouffee. Whatever that yeah. is, dude, I'm going to order that. Uh, I'll order, order that some sometime. Etouffee? Yeah. Etouffee is a Louisiana. <laughs> That's yeah. a Louisiana, that's Louisiana food, man. You're not going to get that out there. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of, Lu oh, dude. Okay. Speaking of Louisiana, for example, hopefully we'll have that director of casino operations on here. Mm -hmm. That would be amazing. Some people from Louisiana. I've got another person coming in that I emailed today from Louisiana. I feel like that, the birthplace of craps, we need some representation on there. It's, it's so popular down here in the south i mean i used to go to new orleans there weren't any land-based casinos mm -hmm. they were all boats yeah and you would get out on the mississippi river on a paddle wheel boat yep the classic paddle wheel boat casino and you'd chug around on the on the mississippi river man i would have loved to have been there Maybe Huckleberry it. It Finn would have been there. Do what? Maybe Huckleberry Finn would have been there. Huckleberry Finn's on the bank sleeping and with a with a fishing rod tied to his. <laughs> yeah, he he'd toenail. be watching it go by. Yeah, he'd be watching us go by. He wasn't old enough to gamble. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we'll tell all of your fellow craps playing friends about it. Please follow Casino Tears on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. If you like the show please rate it five stars and leave a review. The best and most fun way to contact us would be to call and leave a message on our official Casino Tears vent line, 229-NO-7. You can also email us at no7 at casinotears.com. New episodes drop weekly every Tuesday. And lastly, 
To help support this podcast, you can visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash casino tears. On behalf of Roll to Win Craps from Alabama and 10 Ton is number one from Las Vegas, thanks for listening.